Good evening and welcome to CU TV News Center for the week of October 18th. I'm Scott Majeski. And I'm Miriam Mason. Coal Center man David McClellan will spend the rest of his life in prison after pleading guilty Monday to killing 92-year-old Evelyn Stepko in July 2011. McClellan pleaded guilty to first-degree murder before a Washington County judge and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. The annual event of crowning the homecoming king and queen of California University was held this past Saturday at the California Vulcans football game. CUTV reporter Haley Ataro spoke with the newly crowned king and queen. Last week, there were many events that led up to the crowning of homecoming king and queen here at CalU. Alec Barlett and Jasmine Tully were crowned this past Saturday. Um, ever since I was a freshman, um, I wanted to just get involved in campus. And uh, a girl that was from my hometown ran for homecoming and won. So it kind of inspired me and wanted me. I wanted to get involved and run for homecoming my senior year. I actually didn't wasn't planning on running for homecoming queen until Miriam asked me to run with her. Uh, and then once we started running, uh, it's kind of when I started getting into it all and was excited to run for it. There are many emotions for the candidates during the crowning ceremony. Both Alec and Jasmine were very excited to be crowned. Uh, I was very shocked and excited at the same time. I really didn't know how to react, but um, I just felt really good and um, it was just a lot of fun and I was really happy to win. I was nervous as can be um, that everyone knows obviously what happened afterwards. So I, I knew once they said my name, um, what I was planning on doing afterwards, so I was really, really nervous. Alec and Jasmine are very thrilled to be Cal's new homecoming king and queen. They plan to become more active and involved on Cal's campus. For CU TV News Center, I'm Haley Taro. This past week, a special guest from the National Weather Service came to Cal U. Dr. Van Keita Brown talked to students about professionalism as well as what it is like to work for the National Weather Service. CU TV reporter Christina Corletti has the story. This week, Cal U welcomed guest speaker Dr. Van Keita Brown to discuss her role at the National Weather Service and to also hold workshops for students such as resume building and building your professional skills. Dr. Brown represents the National Weather Service as she travels around the country to help with natural disasters. The capacity in which I work is um, social scientist. Um, it's a new role that they created within the last year and a half actually. Um, and the National Weather Service is in its infancy of incorporating social science uh, with physical scientists and working on some of the things that uh, address uh, or that we sorry, contend with as it relates to natural disasters and societal impacts. This week, students attended workshops on resume building and developing professional skills with Dr. Brown. We're going to talk about um, resume building, um, presenting yourself professionally, and I'll also give some tips on interviewing. For more information, feel free to contact Dr. Brown at vanquita.brown at noaa.gov. For CU TV News Center, I'm Christina Corletti. Last month, Pennsylvania State Senate voted to pass Bill 367, also known as the Indigenous Mineral Resources Incentives Development Act. Under this act, Pennsylvania State System schools could retain 50% of revenues received from leases on its property, while 35% would be allocated for distribution among other state-owned schools. The remaining 15% would be used for tuition assistance at all the 14 state system schools. CalU spokesperson Christine Kindle reported that there are no plans for drilling on California's main campus. There's just no room for such activity. The main campus is the only area of land covered under the law. California's Roman Park and SAI Farm are owned by SAI, a separate nonprofit. SAI has had a drilling lease for property at Roman Park since 2011. The lease does not allow for any surface activity on the land. If it should occur, it would be hundreds of feet below the surface only. At this time, there are no plans for any activity at Roman Park. Now, one of Apple's best-kept secrets, and it is tough for the Apple company to keep anything a secret these days, the iPad Mini will host an event in San Jose, California on October 23rd to show off the cheaper and smaller version of the already popular iPad. The screen should measure around 7 inches compared to the normal iPad, which is 10-inch screen. 
The smaller iPad will rival other similar devices such as Amazon's Kindle Fire and Google Nexus 7. Though Apple has yet to release any details on the iPad Mini, experts believe it will be priced around $300 or less. Apple will also be releasing two other products during the event, such as Retina Display, 13-inch MacBook Pro, and a Mac Mini, which will be an upgrade from the previous model. The Center for Civic Engagement and various other offices within Student Affairs are hosting a kickball tournament, Kicks for Kids, to support the Dave Thomas Foundation for Adoption. The event will be October 23rd and October 24th from 4 to 7.30. The cost is $3 per person. Well, it was a very memorable homecoming weekend for my co-anchor right here, Miriam, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. She was recently engaged, if you didn't, under, <laughs> didn't realize that, by the homecoming king, Alec. Yeah, it's actually, it was on YouTube before the game even ended by our family members, so it's crazy. All right, well, congratulations again, Thank Miriam. You. And when we return, Jim Nieder has your weather. Stay tuned.